Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Salman Iqbal, trainer at Learn K8. You can find me on Twitter at Solman Iqbal. On this channel, we discuss everything tech. In this video, we'll be looking at the exciting world of Kubernetes Scheduler. The scheduler is in charge of deploying your workload onto the cluster. It might sound simple, but as with everything else in Kubernetes land, a lot actually happens. So let's get started. Imagine you have this red page you would like to deploy to Kubernetes cluster of your choice. So you write a deployment file. It looks something like this. It has got two replicas of the website you would like to run at all times. Let's see what actually happens when you submit this request. A user would actually send the request to the Kubernetes cluster and say, please create me a deployment with two replicas. Perhaps they would use a command, kubectl apply minus f deployment dot yaml. The request is received by the control plane. The API server that lives in the control plane actually receives the request. And what it does is stores the deployment object in a database called etcd. etcd is a key value database and it stores the information about deployment. There's another component called the controller manager and it is listening to any changes that happen for a deployment. As soon as it notices a change in the deployment, it goes ahead and creates two pods in etcd database and sets them to a pending state. Now is where the scheduler comes into play. So scheduling a pod into a cluster is actually done in two phases, the scheduling phase and the binding phase. In the scheduling phase, the scheduler decides the best nodes for the pod. And in the binding phase, the pod is assigned to a node. As soon as the pod is created by the controller manager, the pod is also added to the scheduler's queue. The scheduler processes pods one at a time. To decide if a node is suitable for the pod, the scheduler scans and filters only relevant nodes. Filtering is actually not enough, as you might end up with a long list of suitable nodes that can accept the pod, so the scheduler scores them. For example, the scheduler will try to prioritize empty nodes. After scoring, it's finally time to notify all interested parties and check if the binding should be delayed. But other than that, the pod is assigned. It's time to seal the deal and create a binding. Yes, let's get there. A binding is just another YAML, like a Kubernetes object, and links the node to the pod. And the binding is also stored in etcd. The pod is scheduled and all the objects are updated in etcd. There's a binary called kubelet running on every node and keeps checking with the control plane to see when it, is, when it needs to create a pod. When it gets the request inside it, Kubelet delegates the creation of the container to a Docker daemon. You can imagine it runs something like docker run app-red, the name of your image. Let's have a look at scheduling and binding in practice. You wish to deploy a pod that requires some GPU. You write a deployment and submit the YAML to the cluster, like you normally would. And this is the state of your cluster. Some nodes are full, some nodes are empty, some nodes support GPU, and others don't. The first phase in the scheduler is filtering. The scheduler will filter all the non-relevant nodes. In this case, not all nodes support GPU, so we can discard the ones that don't. Now we're left with four nodes. Which one should you pick? The scheduler ranks and prioritizes these nodes. There's an empty node, so why not choose that one? And the pod finally gets scheduled on that node. Hallelujah. Now you might be wondering at this point that how does a scheduler actually filter nodes? Well, wonder no more. Filtering is done through predicates. The scheduler has several of them. Let's have a look at them. Pod fits host ports. Checks if a node has a free port for the pod ports the pod is requesting. Pod fits host. Check if a pod specifies a specific node by its host name. Now I'm not gonna go through each one of them because there are quite a few, few of them. So if you wanted more information, I'll add the link in the description where you can go and see what which each of them does. But it's important to note that it goes through these predicates. Well, that is a long list indeed, but it doesn't end here. Scoring is equally as comprehensive. After filtering with predicates, the scheduler goes through a list of priorities to score the nodes. Let's have a look at them. Select a spread priority, spreads pods across host. Considering pods that belong to the same service, stateful sets 
a replica set. Interpod Affinity Priority implements preferred interpod affinity and anti-affinity. Just like filtering, as you can see, it has to go through all of these things to figure out how it should score them. Again, I'm not going to go through all of them. As you can see, there's quite a few of the things it has to go through. So as we've seen, the scheduler is optimized to make the best placements. However, there are times when you know your application better than the scheduler does. So you can influence a scheduler with four mechanisms. You can use node selector if you want to deploy a pod on a node that has a specific label. For example, it might have a label called GPU. Node affinity extends node selector and gives a bit more flexibility in deploying pods to nodes. Pod affinity and anti-affinity. Sometimes you want apps to be next to each other or you don't want two apps to be next to each other. You can use pod affinity and anti-affinity to control that behavior. Taints allow a node to repel a set of pods. Tolerations are applied to pods and allows the pods to be scheduled on the nodes that have that matching taint. If node selector, node affinity, pod affinity, or anti-affinity and taints and tolerations aren't enough, you can influence the scheduler by writing your own plugin. At the beginning of this video, we discussed how scheduler goes through two phases, scheduling phase and a binding phase. We focused on the big picture but you should know that the scheduler internals are more granular. The filtering phase is divided into pre-filter and filter. Even the score phase is more complex. It's divided in pre-score, score, and normalized score. All the blocks in scheduling phase are customizable and pluggable. The binding phase is not exposed for customization, but it is still broken down in four distinct blocks. So what does the code look like for writing a plugin for the scheduler? Here's an example. Look at the queue sort plugin. It takes two pods and tells if one should be prioritized over the other. If this is also not enough, you could write your own scheduler. That is all I wanted to share with you on how Kubernetes scheduler works. I hope you found that information a bit useful. Please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be dropping more videos regularly. Thank you very much for watching.